Also, here's a horrifying insult into the mind of the writer of this movie. He says, the sexual urge is the most powerful thing experienced by humans. That's terrifying. That's a terrifying <laughs> world. Game. What would you say the most powerful emotion you've ever felt is? My boner. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because this is the only job where I can say fuck to my customers this much. I'm your host, No Illusions, and unfortunately for you, but even more unfortunately for him, Heath is unable to join us today. I feel so bad <laughs> Heath is unable to join us today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. I'm incredible. We've peaked. As a show, this should be our finale. Oh, this is... I just, I, I regret every adjective I've ever used on this show because I want to reserve them for this one, right? <laughs> like, I just, like, guys, go back and erase all the adjectives that I've ever said before. Let me say them anew about this bat shittery. Okay, just the two of us. I hope there's enough crazy in this movie to cover the time. <laughs> so tell us, Eli, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Gramps Goes to College. It's oh. the terrifyingly sad fantasy of a former computer programmer and college tennis player who retires to bother people about Jesus. Played by and written by Donald James Parker, a former computer programmer and college tennis player who retired <laughs> to bother people about Jesus. <laughs> oh, and it's just, oh, well, yeah, there's just, there's so much. There's so fucking much. We'll get all, we'll get to all of it. But before we do, Eli, tell us how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved the last half muttered ramblings of your loved ones as dementia slowly swallowed up the only them that ever was, but you wished that the pain and desperation it caused had been more religious, <laughs> you will love this movie. <laughs> it's Dear Abby, the movie. Oh, my. All right. So here's the thing. <laughs> this is so insane. About. I don't know, 40 times maybe since we've started this show, you've texted me because you always watch the movies first. You text me and you go, this is the craziest shit we've ever watched. And somehow you're always right. I'm always right. This is <laughs> literally the craziest shit we've ever watched. And of course, this is a film from Chip Rossetti. Right. A director so famous that when you look his name up on IMDb, the first thing that comes up is some other dude with the same name that earned a special thanks credit in Terminator Dark Fate. <laughs> but we and the audience, of course, know him as the director of Right to Believe, One More Round, and of course, his absolute masterpiece. Well, this is his fucking masterpiece. <laughs> his masterpiece, as we understood it before we watched this movie, The Unexpected Bar Mitzvah. That's right. This week, we move past his mother in the most Chip Rossetti films ever watched ranking. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. He's like our Scorsese, you know? Yeah. Like, he was just like, oh, a casino, a raging bull. It's just, we're taking, oh, he just keeps coming out with the hits. The man's <laughs> he's, unstoppable. He's like the exact opposite of Scorsese. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly. Also, listeners, you'll note we covered both pronunciations of that name, so you don't get to tweet at us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so okay, so of the Chip Rossetti films that we've watched, where did this one rank for you? Oh man. Okay, look. Nobody tore open their shirt and cried, Barukatara Nyala Hanu. So it's always gonna be second, but it's close. It's close. And yeah. more importantly, because of this movie, I found all of the other movies that Donald James Parker wrote and sells on his website, as well as the novelizations of this movie what? and and the what? unexpected bar mitzvah. So, oh. yeah, we're set <laughs> for a while. <laughs> All right. So I've got my holiday reading. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, 
my God. All right. I might have to actually go back and watch the unexpected bar mitzvah again to really say this, but I think this might be my favorite of Rosetti's selections. This might be yeah. number one on the list for me. I don't, like I said, I, I owe it to unexpected bar mitzvah to go back and maybe even right to believe, honestly. But yeah, yeah, I think I've got this at one. Okay, so is there anything you want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yes, I'm going to nominate this for best worst old-timey expressions. We get like a pink Cadillac at a mafia funeral. We get, yep. I think you're selling us a crock and it ain't filled with butter. <laughs> every catchphrase in this movie serves as an avatar of the film itself. They're all like a little racist and a little insane. They're just tiny indications of a time gone by that lives inside Donald James Parker's brain at all times. <laughs> well, okay, so I was going to do a bit where I was going to have like eight best worsts here because everything kept occurring to me. You know, best <laughs> worst disease pronunciation, best worst. I had it as best worst Christian movie for a while there, but ultimately I settled on one. I'm going to go with best worst ego. <laughs> okay, right? yeah. In the true sense of what we mean by best worst, for fuck's sake, throughout this movie, keep in mind that every single time we bring up a character randomly mentioning how handsome this guy is, that he wrote it. Yes, he did. The genius <laughs> decathlete renaissance man who could have been in Mensa if he wanted to, that just can't seem to lose an argument, is the goddamn writer of the goddamn movie about himself to the to the word like what companies he worked for as a computer program are listed in this film yep. about his character it is the <laughs> darkest possible timeline <laughs> <laughs> all right well when you're descending this deep into insanity you need a minute for your body to adjust to the pressure so we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll dive into all the naval framing that is Gramps goes to college. Hey, podcast listeners. If you listen to our other shows or you've just been listening to us for a long time, you know that we've just launched our yearly fundraiser, Vulgarity for Charity. Woo! Each year we get together with Tom and Cecil from the Cognitive Dissonance Podcasts, as well as a variety of special guests and friends from the podcast diverse to raise money for one of our favorite charities, Modest Needs. Modest Needs is a fantastic charity that helps folks who aren't eligible for other kinds of help get back on their feet. They combine smart fundraising through research and financial assistance to make sure that money goes directly where it needs to be. And of course, they never take a percent of what someone raises. Last year, we raised over $120,000. And this year, a donor at Modest Needs is matching all donations up to 100000 bucks. So anything that you give is doubled. But you won't just be doing good. You'll be getting sweet, sweet, sweet revenge as well. Just donate $50 or more and send the receipt to vulgarity for charity at Gmail. That's the word, not the number for. Along with who you'd like us to roast. And we'll deliver a scathing takedown of the person, place, or thing of your choice, either on the scathing atheist or on cognitive. Of dissonance. Want us to give your racist uncle the David A.R. White treatment? Need someone to tell the truth about dill pickles once and for all? Again, just donate $50 or more. Send the proof to vulgarity for charity at gmail.com along with who you'd like us to roast and a picture if they're not famous, and we'll take them to Roastville. Vulgarity for charity. If we hit $100,000, I'll stop smoking. True. Cigarettes. Yes. Cigarettes. They're very clear. Very clear about that. Cigarettes. Yeah. Permanently, though, like not just like for Tuesday, like permanent. Yeah, it's not Heath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone, welcome to the first day of shooting Gramps Goes to College, a Chip Rossetti production. We haven't agreed on that yet. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, everyone, this is Donald James Parker. He's our star. Oh, bro, me. I'll take anyone right now, um... right now. No. Do Donald, Donald, that's Courtney. I'm here because my dad made me. Had a girl. Right. So, quick overview. Uh, Gramps Goes to College is about a feisty old retiree who decides to go back to college so that he can educate the teachers. Wait, he goes to college so he can educate other people? Don't interrupt. Yep, he does. He does. Uh, he's a retired computer programmer. Like me. Who played tennis in college. Like me. Yeah, Donald, just like you. So he gets to school where he meets Michaela's father, and Michaela's father asks him to watch his daughter. Wait, what? 
so he says yes. But unfortunately for Michaela, she's got a fallen roommate who dates boys and drinks alcohol. Burn her! Donald, Donald. Sorry, sorry. We yeah. talked about it. So Gramps befriends her, her roommate, and his roommate, who is a Christian kid who just can't get enough of having an older man guide him through his first year of college. Who wouldn't love that? Exactly. But then there's this other kid on campus who challenges him to all the sports in a row for the big trophy. All the sports in a row? Yep. Yep. They do all the sports in a row uh, from chess to tennis. I played tennis in college. You did. So he obviously wins all of those sports. But while he's at it, he also disproves evolution despite his atheist lady professor. And she wants to have sex with me. Him. Him. Yep, she does. Really, really bad. In fact, as she's trying to have sex with him, Michaela's roommate is at an alcohol party when she dies during a drinking game. Wait, sorry. How does she die? Oh, uh, from the drinking game. But that's okay because your character prays her back to life. Seriously? Yes, it's a very serious part of the movie that we will take very seriously. So Gramps goes home, but not before everyone applauds him because they all love him at the college and they always will. And that's that's the movie. Guys, uh, I gotta say, this movie seems... Before you finish that sentence, just a quick heads up, Courtney. Donald also helped write the movie. A lot of me in there. Yeah, So so the movie seems... Great. Great. I think so, too. Arm wrestle me, I said. I said no. That's two. You're afraid because you're afraid. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back, and it's time to learn what you fantasize about when you're not allowed to think about fucking. But before we get to that, we have to discuss the gotcha logo. (laughs) I'm like my first notice, and the movie's on and I'm singing. (laughs) Yeah, it's like a DVD menu went to AA and found Jesus. (laughs) Yes, and the music behind it is what an evangelical Disney princess would fuck to. Yes. (laughs) The background just has the words creationism and evolution everywhere. Just just to get me hard early. (laughs) And then, okay, so we open at this gym where these two guys have just been locked into the same exercise for years and years until they get Popeye like forearms or something. It's the best. So they are doing lat pulls incorrectly. And Gramps, our protagonist, is doing, you know, those sets of shrugs in the 75s. You know, how you do 75 <laughs> shrugs per set. Yeah, so they're having this conversation. Neither of them ever thinks to switch arms or nope. change exercises. Mm-mm. Nothing like that. And the conversation basically goes like, well, now that you're retired, Gramps, what will this movie be about? <laughs> yeah, and his answer is, I think I'm going back to college, you know, prove that God exists. The usual. Yeah. <laughs> Also, little note on this being shot in a gym. You know what gyms are covered in? Mirrors. So if you want to see the cameraman at any point in this scene, (laughs) just look behind the actors and the uh, misdirection of the person in the back going, woo, is also really strong. It is very obvious that Donald James Parker walked around the gym and was like, we're shooting a real serious movie, okay? So no noises. And then atheist Heath was just like, Woo! Treadmill! <laughs> Fucking treadmilling it up! Oh, yeah! Treadmill! <laughs> the entire time they were shooting. So, yeah, so they have this conversation about how Gramps is going to go back to college because, and this is a, a quote, This I've got a lot of quotes, I'm pulling a lot of quotes today, because, quote, most of those kids don't realize they're being brainwashed by liberal, secular, humanist professors. <laughs> Jews. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Jews. They're Jews. <laughs> Jews is what I sneezed just now. And Jews. Yeah, no, he's going to go to college to convince children that the devil is real. <sighs> All right. That's his goal of higher education. So, just, again, just to be clear, where this movie starts is an old man going... I'm going back to college to teach other people. Yeah, right. I'm going to give them college professors a piece of my mind. The movie. 
<laughs> All right. And so now we also have to cut to the un and this is so goddamn weird because in the last scene, the guy is just talking about like, I have a bitchy granddaughter that hates me. And then we cut to this girl who is not his granddaughter. Nope, and we will not never his meet his granddaughter. Mm -mm, that is Donald. So uh, I'm going to admit it. I went down a Donald Parker rabbit hole and read <laughs> way too many of his blogs. Uh, <laughs> What I get from implications within the blog is that at some point his daughter told him exactly where he could shove it. And his granddaughter has since communicated that message as well. So he's worked that into many of his movies, novels and blog posts. <laughs> oh, see, he's just <laughs> he, he will work it into the very finale of this movie in the saddest <laughs> darkest moment on cinema see the coen brothers would have watched that shot and been like you guys are gonna bum <laughs> people out ending, man. you probably want to cut that line <laughs> look at your heart return oh. my text messages <laughs> that's I, I was just gonna say that's so much sadder that scene is so much sadder now <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, but I don't mind laughing at it because fuck this guy. Okay. Because fuck this guy and good for his granddaughter and daughter. Good yeah, right. Them. Right. I hope exactly. they're listening. Hi. Keep in mind, <laughs> just remember if you're feeling a little sympathetic at home, guys, this is the dude who did right to believe about how straight newspaper reporters shouldn't have to cover stories about pride parades without being able to use the word fag and <laughs> the other and the unexpected bar mitzvah about how friends don't let friends be Jewish. Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So now we're going to cut to ungrateful, spoiled liberal college girl who can't believe that mom isn't even going to pay for her apartment during her senior year at college. Yeah, but her mom is a good Christian, and she lets her know that this is her punishment for drinking and driving and totaling her car. Yeah, seems a little uh, little light on the punishment, to be honest with you. <laughs> seems like a weird punishment, right? Oh, all right, you've murdered your brother. You know what? Just for that, you have to buy your own textbooks this semester. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, by the way, I just want to point out, because we meet this character in so many of the movies, the bitchy liberal college woman. It's always a fucking woman because the the muse for this character, right? The inspiration for this character is the hot chicks that won't fuck the writer. Yeah. Or in this case, the hot chicks that the writer imagines won't fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, they won't, but he has never had contact with these women he is pre-angered at college yes, women exactly. he's never met. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, she's a bitchy. That's all we need to know about her. So now we get Gramps showing up at the University of College and finding out that, damn it, he wanted to be in a man dorm. But those those book up quickly. Most college age men wouldn't want a co-ed dorm. Those book up <laughs> super quick. So he wound up in the co-ed dorm. Yep. Uh, also, the lady at the front. OK, sorry. There's so many things we need to get to. This entire movie is shot in an old age home. That's important. We should cover that. Oh, is this it? is our first shot of that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. It is the only special thanks in the credits. It's like thanks to Sunrise Hills uh, Farm for Euthanasia for the <laughs> lovely use of their hallways and desks. The woman who checks him in her hair is either <laughs> what all Orthodox Jewish women have based their wig on <laughs> or cut via protractor. There is only one of those two options. And it could be both. I mean, the third option is both. Yes, yeah, yep. exactly. That's true. So he gets his room assignment and he turns to the woman and he goes, hey, wait a minute. I'm not going to have some sexy female roommate, am I? And she's like, no, that no, of fucking course no. not. And he goes, oh, because I don't. Don't want that. I'm glad yeah. that I don't. Good. Wrong. Wrong. Stupid fantasy. Sorry. I'm writing <laughs> that one right now. We'll do that next week. If you, we would all stop quitting. <laughs> all right. So as he's walking away, we see a cute blonde showing up for her first day of college with her dad. And I found this odd. She was a legitimately attractive actor, which is odd in a Chip Rossetti film, right? Mm, like, yeah. usually he settles for an unattractive person with attractive person written on them, like a political cartoon or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, yeah, this is, I think, just the role of the homeschool dice, right? Like someone's cousin married someone's second cousin, and they just found a beauty gene in there, and they were like, you're our Michaela once and yeah. for all. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Two eyes that face the same direction. Excuse me, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> But yeah, she's thanking her dad for dropping her off at college and for being her age. Yeah. <laughs> and the lines for the dad are some of the clunkiest things ever goddamn written. I don't remember what they are exactly. I just have, I am going to say some natural human words now in my notes. <laughs> my one quote that I wrote down is, I love how you grasp reality without flinching. Yeah, what? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, she's also going to be a character. So dad drops her off at her uh, room and then on his way back out, I guess he runs into Gramps. Right. And he's like, hello, elderly man sitting around in the co-ed dorm room. Do you like at least work here or something? <laughs> and he's like, no, no, but your daughter, real quote, looks like a real sweetie. What? Totally normal thing to say to another adult about their grown daughter. It's normal. Normal yeah, guy oh, talk. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. When I, as a 60 year old man, encounter somebody with a hot 19 year old daughter, I definitely tend to label her as a sweetie. And, and of course, they have the, they bond over Jesus here, the Michaela's dad and Gramps. But they do it like mutual sports fans, right? It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you saying you like to fucking pray too? Dude, that's fucking amazing. Look at that. Another <laughs> Christian here in the middle of nowhere in America. Who'd have thought? Wow. Yeah. Again, this takes place in Tennessee. What are the odds you'll run into a Christian in Tennessee? <laughs> home, to, home of the Scopes Monkey Trial. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Do you also like cars with four, cars with four wheels? Yes. <laughs> And dad's parting line, of course, in his well-written line words is, quote, I hope your experience as a non-traditional student will be rewarding. Are all words in this human language I speak? <laughs> I am from this planet. So long with your studenting college old man college. All right. So now Michaela gets to meet her roommate and it turns out that it's bitchy liberal girl from before. Oh, uh, that is Stephanie. And hey, fun fact about this scene, both us and the Christians are horrified by this scene. It's just a different character that we find terrifying. It's yeah, funny. right, right. <laughs> Yeah, because it's the conversation between party girl and good Christian girl, right? So good Christian girl's like, do you have a boyfriend? And she's like, no, I, I just fuck every dick I can wrap my vag around pretty much, right? You want to go to a party? And she's like, do you think like a birthday party with cake? Yeah. And again, we are horrified by Michaela and they are horrified by a liberal girl. I'm like, yeah, get that dick. Good for yeah, her. Right, right. Exactly. Parties are have fun. that party. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, but Steph and then Stephanie like gives her shit. She's like, oh, you must still be a virgin. I bet you're religious or something. Yeah. Like they do to you when you go to college. <laughs> That's first question they asked me. It was our RA icebreaker. All right, let's go around. I'm Adam the anteater. And who here's a virgin? All right. <laughs> great. Everyone take note. Take note. All right. So then, of course, Gramps has to meet his roommate. This is Brad. Brad really seems to love the whole idea that Gramps is going to be like, he's really into this right away. Right. Brad, Brad is so psyched that a 60 something year old devout evangelical Christian is his roommate. It's fantastic. He's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you saying I'm going to get a roommate who brings their own denture cream? I am in. <laughs> <laughs> also, look, I, maybe I went to a weird college. Do roommates usually have beds that are next to each other? Like your weird friend's parents who you realize as an adult hated each other? <laughs> Not in my experience. Not that close. No. <laughs> yeah. These uh. beds are two inches apart. And honestly, look, I think if, you know, Heath and us got to write it or something like a movie about the weird evangelical Christian going back to college to prove evolution doesn't exist. And like his roommate, that could be a fucking hilarious meet. Yeah, right. It's great murder mystery. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, Brad's like, well, good. I was afraid I was going to have some party animal roommate that wouldn't let me study my Bible. 
also, when he walks in, it's just a tiny moment, but he's like, hey, are you a janitor? He's like, no, it's our room. Let me guess. You haven't taken Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People course. And I wrote in my notes, I have never been more sure of anything than I am that the guy who wrote this movie has taken that course maybe multiple (laughs) times. And again, in my blog research, yes, he has taken that course. Yes, he has taken it multiple times. Oh, nice. Because nice. the Dale Carnegie course didn't stick the first time around. I still don't have any friends. I must have done it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keeping it topical with the Dale Carnegie jokes. Well done. And then they have the whole moment where the roommate, Brad, goes like, well, you're an old person. Can you even use a computer? And he's like, I was a data processing professional for 30 years as a computer programmer. I'll have you know in real life and in this movie. Yep, and in real life and in this movie, which means he wrote, he was like, I'll show my grandniece to tell me to stop typing in all caps. I was being. (laughs) I know how to do this. Emphasizing. (laughs) Also, there's this amazing moment where he goes, I mean, I've been called an animal, just not a party animal. So what? You you shot first at my lie? What does that mean? so many questions about that line (laughs) all right but we can't get to all the questions because it's about time for gramps to go see his advisor and find out if there's room for a creationist in their science program i have to talk about the physical appearance of this advisor please do okay you know how jeffrey tambor would look if he was in old age makeup There you go. You nailed this advisor. (laughs) Whatever you're picturing. Yeah, no, you got it. You got it. (laughs) It was just some like extra like jowls. If they said just just jowl it up, you know. Yeah. Triple the jowl. Yeah. And he opens this scene by basically being like, look, I want to know, can I get my master's in biology, even though I literally think that science is a trick planted by the devil to make man fall? (laughs) And the advisor is just like... No, no. (laughs) Is it because I'm old? No, man, it's not because you're old. It's because you think a wizard made the planet. (laughs) And I love this moment, too, because he's like, you guys are such bigots. As a matter of fact, I have a quote from you for you from John Scopes. (laughs) Right. And and of course, like, first of all, I can't find this quote anywhere except for in anti-evolution websites that my <laughs> fucking antivirus software warns me off. Of. <laughs> but I love that at the end he goes, I think John Scopes had it right. I'm like, he was the evolution guy. Y'all. You know? It's not a that was didn't. <laughs> also that that quote, while we cannot find the context, is almost certainly not to your point. <laughs> no, right. Because he's like, Yeah, no, I think there's a way bigger problem in academia than there is in the hills of Tennessee or whatever. And I think he means like yeah, intelligent racists justifying their racism is a problem. Not these fucking bigots here won't take my creationism seriously. Well, but again, I'm John Scopes. He was the evolution guy, so it's entirely possible that he was also talking about the prejudice that people, that religious people had against science in that <laughs> quote, too. Yeah. Yep. And, but one way or the other, like I said, I can only find the quote out of context on anti evolution websites, so it also is entirely possible that he never fucking said it. And I want to talk about the fake turn back because my religion is now this fake turn back. So he tries to do a Columbo moment at the end of the scene. Oh, yeah. Where where he goes, one more thing, except it actually plays like this. There's way more races than the foothills of Tennessee. Oh, shit. Fuck. Uh, One more thing. (laughs) Evolution is bad. I blew it. I blew it. Keep (laughs) this. Let's not delete anything that we ever recorded for this movie ever, no matter what. And also, like, just to dwell on that quote from the the quote that he uses about how there's more bigotry in academia than like he's using that to to mean bigotry against creationism. Right. So he has no issue whatsoever blithely equating being intolerant of a race or a sexual orientation with being intolerant of answering the question wrong on an exam. Same thing. Just, you know, oh, man, they're all bad Nazis and KKK members and those machines that correct the Scantron. They're all a real problem in the United States today. 
All right. So now oh, we've heard multiple times now at this point in the movie about this legendary biology class that just chases the Jesus right out of even the strongest believer. Oh, here it comes. Yeah. So we're opening it up in this notorious atheism biology class uh, with poor Christian Michaela just sitting there not partying or doing drugs. <laughs> and, right. And the other college students just walk by with a cornucopia of temptations. They're like, hey, Michaela, want some crystal meth? Hey, Michaela, want this penis? Hey, Michaela, want this vagina? And she's just like, no, <laughs> it's gone. It's the weirdest grocery store. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, everybody sits exactly beside Michaela because they've got this big-ass auditorium with three people in it, so they have mm. to have them all sit real close together. <laughs> and then the biology professor comes in, and I love, she, she like, she comes in, and she immediately walks right up to Gramps, and she goes, so are you a student or something and not just a weird old fucker flirting with a 19-year-old? And he's like, but both? Both. Here I'm both. My yep, card. Sorry, I am. Uh, I am both. And she's like, oh, OK, cool. It's exciting that like an older person has come here to learn and enrich themselves. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, am, I am here to derail your biology 101 <laughs> classroom. Yeah. And they have this great exchange where he's like, well, I sure hope you allow student interaction, which she takes to mean, I hope you'll let me put a dick in you later. And she says, so she responds like, I would fuck you in a heartbeat, right? Yeah. Because every female character in this movie would fuck him in a heartbeat. Wants the G. <laughs> <laughs> so here's how she begins her opening lecture oh my. of her biology 101 classroom. Okay. Who believes that God exists? Good. Good. I will kill your God by the end of this semester. You can sit back down. I I was rolling from this opening. She <laughs> says, all right, the way I always start class, I'm going to ask the same question. I'm going to ask you again at the end of the semester, who here believes in God? And I had to pause the goddamn movie to laugh for 25 fucking <laughs> minutes. Now, we can't pan across to see how many people are raising their hands because they literally can't afford extras. Nope, nope. Need more than three people to pan across the thing. Yeah, so. exactly. You have know, running behind the other seats, you know. But yeah, it, she assures them by the end of her course, they will no longer be Christian. And then she turns to Gramps out of the blue and she says, would you like to retort? <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome to the first day of class. I like to think of my class as more of a debate against me and whichever of you is the most mentally ill. Oh, good, Mr. <laughs> Bounds. Great. <laughs> Do you want to literally call me names? Because even in your own movie, you don't have a response to God doesn't exist. Yeah, right. Yeah. So he stands up and gives the fool says in his heart, there is no God moment. Yeah. Yeah. And she's just like, oh, that's. That's not a response. That's just an insult. And he's like, you, you first. You did. Yeah. You did right. first. <laughs> I'm rubber. You're you, glue. You know who Coke weighed first, though? Two. <laughs> Two did. <laughs> so. All right. So then we cut to uh, Stephanie, the bad girl, and all her friends hanging out, talking about the last scene. Apparently, Gramps is now the talk of the town for standing up to that atheist biology professor. And we get a subplot here that I desperately wanted the movie to explore, and it does not. One of the friends, when describing the scene, says, quote, I can just picture Tucker drilling into him with her piercing eyes. And this girl's unrequited love for Professor Tucker <laughs> is the subplot we wanted and didn't get. <laughs> Crazy billionaire. Re well, sorry. Crazy six dollars and forty five cents in air remake yeah, of this right. movie. I know where I'm focusing. <laughs> so, and then, okay, so then they're like, oh, but you know who would really have the lowdown on this, you know, talk of the campus exchange during a biology 101 class at 8.30 in the a.m., Stephanie, your perky Christian roommate. So they run out to ask her about it, right? And I love this exchange. Again, it's their fucking movie. Stephanie says, hey, I hear that the professor in biology got challenged by a guy old enough to know Charles Darwin. To which Michaela says, he's not that old. <laughs> As though no. Stephanie was genuinely accusing him of being in his early 200s or whatever. 
wanted it to continue. She's just like, no, I- I'm pulling your leg. You're not. Your hands aren't on my leg. <laughs> My dad dropped me off. I know. Okay. <laughs> so, do you want to come to dinner with me and a senior citizen? Yes, I do. Like, yeah, like what all the college girls want to hang out with a sexagenarian for a bit. All right. Well, I t- I'll tell you what. I know this has given you a lot to process, and you probably haven't even realized that this is a sports movie yet. So we're going to pause for a minute and let you catch up. And when we come back, the insanity will at least triple. At least. From the makers of Gramps Goes to College. Hey, everyone. Wow, Eli Bosnick, you're so awesome. Comes the realization that even your most pathetic fantasies count as a movie. Hey, Dean, weed isn't just legal on campus now, it's mandatory. Whatever you say, no illusions. Because if Donald James Parker can do it, why can't we? I'm sorry, Professor. I think you'll find that spelled G-E-E-T. Well, by gum, it is. This summer, Eli and Noah go to college. Excuse me, sir. You can't smoke in here without a trophy. <laughs> and we're back and... Get ready for what may be the greatest scene in the history of Christian movies. Nothing really happens. It's just a bunch of people sitting around in a cafeteria, but everything happens here. Okay. Oh, can we talk about the set? I just want to yeah, talk about this. Let's they start a, there. Yes. They have a marker drawing of a tiger mascot and a poster that says, only science can something something. We'll yep. see the full poster later, <laughs> yes, but it's we will. only science is the theme. Yeah, so there's one sign that's just handwritten that says, Beat the Skyhawks, and then there's Go Panthers with the goddamn Thundercats logo written (laughs) underneath it, and that's how they, and now it's a college cafeteria. So yeah, they're they're sitting there at this cafeteria, it's uh, Michaela and her roommate, the fallen Stephanie, and then Gramps and Brad, his roommate, show up, because apparently he's trying to set Michaela up with Brad. Mm Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, Stephanie's going to swoop in with that patented pickup line. Let me drive your car. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's like, so do you have a vehicle of your own? He's like, yep, I sure do. She's like, would you like to fuck me? Perhaps. (laughs) Let me tell you, are you interested in penetration? And do you have a vehicle? Oh, you both. All right. Excellent. There you go. Two, Two in a row. But but very clearly, she goes the other way with that. Yeah. So she's she's soliciting a little bit of, uh, of penis, and then we meet the bad guy. The bad guy. <laughs> this is Jace. Is his is his name? I had him as Chase and Jason throughout my notes, but it's Jace. We eventually see it written down: J A S E. And he used to date Stephanie last year, but she's moved on from him now. And he's there to talk shit at people about sports randomly. (laughs) He's there to simultaneously challenge and induct people into his intramural all the sports team. Yeah, right. I like at first I thought this was bizarre because they weren't specifying a sport. He's like, do you want to be on my sports team? And everybody's like, you know, I don't want to be on your sports. We're going to make our own sports team. I'm like, shouldn't you specify a sport? But no, no, it's it's the all of them team. Not at this college, because at this college, their events will range from chess to horse to tennis. Horse. We'll get there. (laughs) Yeah, but he's like, uh, he's like, I'm here to recruit athletes for my intramural sports team. But you guys are too much of losers to be on my team. And then Gramps goes, well, maybe we'll just start our own team. (laughs) Earning him my second and Tara banged what? (laughs) <laughs> yes and the first time in cinema anyone's ever said i'm gonna start my own team and it's turned out well for them <laughs> so. and as jace exits this is the fucking best as jace exit he goes look i gotta get out of here before all the studs are gone yeah <laughs> hey writer of this film the guy who said that to you wasn't trying to get you on a sports team okay nope he was not but yeah, so the, he walks off and everybody's like, I want to be on your team, Gramps. It can be an all Christian team. We can segregate our teams by religion. At which point Michaela goes, can I be a cheerleader? Yeah, what is happening? 
<laughs> I just I want to see the scene where they turn away the Muslim kid, but we don't get that. Yeah. No. So, OK, so Brad and Stephanie leave and now some anti creationists start heckling them entirely from my right headphone. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> hey, hey, I heard you're a creationist. Did you stoop? Stupid, stupid, <laughs> dumb. So, yeah, so after that, uh, Michaela and uh, Gramps talk for a bit. She's like, oh, were you trying to set me up with Brad? And he, he was like, well, I was thinking about that. She's like, yeah, it looks like Stephanie swooped in already. To which Gramps says, well, you know, a double minded woman is unstable in all her ways. Again, yeah. I'm sorry. What? Yeah. I wrote in my notes, you know what God says about Stephanie? She should be stoned to death. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but Gramps, though, can sense that she used to be a Christian, though. Yeah. He read the whole script, I guess. <laughs> read and wrote. Well, wrote, yeah. And now, because this is the darkest and saddest of fantasies, two fellow students come up to ask him for his autograph for interrupting their biology class. That is exactly what fucking happens. Look, if you want to predict what's going to happen in the next scene of this movie, just ask yourself, what's the silliest thing that could possibly happen next? And you will predict this script with 100% accuracy. This is when I had that realization and I nailed the rest of the movie. Yeah, this movie is like if Stay had taken place on a retirement home bathroom floor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but these, he doesn't give autographs. That's so fucking weird. Like they come up and ask him for his autograph and he says no. <laughs> <laughs> but he does invite him to be on his generic all the sports team. Yeah, and I got to say, unless the sport is premature ejaculation, I do not think these guys are your first pick. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing, too, because we will never see these two actors again. So uh, even though we will spend a lot of time on the sports competitions <laughs> and then. OK, so now two randos show up to ask how a computer programmer could be a Christian. <laughs> to which he responds, let me guess, you guys read that atheist rag wired magazine. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be repetitive, but What? <laughs> fucking what he just goes off on wired magazine being too secular <laughs> which by the way if you didn't get enough of it in this movie there is an accompanying blog post <laughs> <laughs> i have to read the novelization of this all right so yeah and and so this is the first of many times where this movie will get very difficult to watch because he'll just spout off a bunch of bullshit his anti-evolution argument about how could a brain exist without the lungs and how could the lungs exist without the blood? And instead of like having someone actually answer these simplistic child minded questions about evolution, everyone just sits around and goes, whoa, I've never thought about only one side of this argument before. <laughs> I'm convinced. Well, and to his credit, none of these were challenges to evolution I had heard before. Like, wait. Can a creature exist without a brain has never been brought up in our 220 episodes of anti-science bullshit. I, I wanted to be like, does this guy like not know about single celled organisms? Oh, How do we tell him? Yeah. OK, so but that's so this is Frank Turek's argument, right? That's where he, and he, and he even says at the end, he's like, you can instead of Wired magazines, you guys should read the book. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. And this that's the argument. And, and basically, it boils down to the all of the things have to evolve together for any of them to make sense. Right. Like, so you can't have one organ without all of the other organs. But they did all evolve together, like all models of evolution would suggest that they all evolve together in tandem. So it's it's not even really an argument, which is why we haven't heard it very often. But this <laughs> asshole is dumb enough to be like, oh, no, I get it. Yeah, you're right. How could that happen? Yeah, no, uh, you see, each of your organs is like a different Power Ranger and your <laughs> body is like a Megazord saying it's crazy. Well, and again, is that what he thinks, though? Does he really think that evolution posits that there were just some lungs floating around in the ocean <laughs> and the heart floating around and going, we got to get together, dude. Shit, this is useless. These I have lungs are just all this blood, nowhere to put it. <laughs> just, 
just the the blood organisms did not last very long, according to Charles Darwin. They really didn't make it for a while. Also, we get this straw man, which we have gotten a bunch of times, which is the you're saying atoms just came together out of nothing. And no, that's that's you. Yeah, that's what you believe. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, exactly. So these guys leave and I and we get this fucking canard where Michaela says, you know, I've been noticing that college isn't teaching us how to think. It's teaching us what to think. Another way of saying that is I just noticed that college is telling us facts. <laughs> I'm just noticing that they act like they have all the ants. Oh, they do. They have all the ants. Right. Oh, because, yeah. yeah, they're expert. Jesus fucking Christ. Still, I want to attend a priori university. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Welcome to class. How do you know you're here? Please take out your notebooks and prove that they exist. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to cut back to that uh, biology class that takes place in purgatory, I guess, since they can't afford a classroom, so they just have to make sure everything's pitch black behind everyone. And again, this is a new anti-evolution argument. The argument oh. from, can you tell me how heavy natural selection is? I I was baffled with this. Yeah, okay. So she starts talking about natural selection and Gramps raises his hand and he's just like, hey, I'm going to derail the class and waste everybody's time uh, a little while. Can you tell me what color and size natural selection is? That is the most batshit argument that we have ever witnessed. But to be fair, like, I feel like this is one of the most realistic points in the movie because the professor's like, I can't answer that question. And I'm sure that in a normal university, that would be the first half of the sentence as well. Just like, I can't answer that question <laughs> because it's insane. Right. Professor, what does math smell neck? Like? Case dismissed. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like pointing out the existence of the sounds his mouth just made <laughs> would refute that argument. Did you notice the words coming out of your mouth? Anyway, yeah, right. <laughs> And also, I love that he slips this in. He's like, well, I hope I've helped these students realize that just because something's written in a textbook doesn't make it the truth. Now, here's what Bronze Age people thought in the time before fact checking or formal logic. We're not the ones slavishly uh, fucking devoted to a book, dude. You cannot make the argument that we're the ones too slavishly devoted to a book. Yeah. You know how our books change? Yeah. That's the indication about who's dedicated to the book. Jesus, actual line from the movie here. People don't believe in God because they can't see him, but they'll readily believe in and even evangelize for natural selection, which doesn't even have any properties we can see. He just disproved the existence of atoms, concepts, th the side of Jupiter that isn't facing us right now, music, words, pain, love, emotions. How can he think this is a fucking argument? <laughs> also, to to finish their conversation, the professor says, how about we take this discussion offline? Now, look, <laughs> the reason that line is in the movie is because the guy who wrote it is constantly being challenged to fights on Facebook. And he just <laughs> thinks that's how conversations end now. Yes. They're not yes. online. <laughs> no, they're not. But to her credit, right, like this character saying, hey, maybe we could have this conversation in a way that does not disrupt class and waste the time of everyone else here who actually wants to know the things that I'm being paid to teach them. Oh, wait, sorry, I'm sorry. Education doesn't have any properties that we can see and thus doesn't exist. So we might as well talk <laughs> about this. Let's do this Jesus. right fucking now. <laughs> fucking Christ. What a dumbass movie. All right. So and then, of course, we have to get the uh, the biology professor and her friend professor chatting about who Gramps, who is their quote this time, the talk of the campus. Oh, and the actor on the right, the one who plays like her fellow professor who's in love with her mm -hmm. and wants to sleep with her, even though he's married, he cannot stop moving. He's doing jumping no. jacks and squat <laughs> thrusts. He might as well freeze. He's that asshole that I always get stuck next to in the waiting room who's just fidgeting <laughs> the entire fucking time and pounding his leg up. And uh, yeah, he's that guy. <laughs> Wanted him to start drumming his fingers on the desk, takes out a fidget spinner. Sorry, I'm just going <laughs> to click this loudly near your head. 
But again, to prove that they're like evil liberal professors, they have this moment at the end where he's like, oh, I wish I could have sex with you. And she's like, ah, uh, I wish I could have sex with you, but you're married. And he's like, ah, marriage. Am I right? And she's like, yeah, we don't believe in that or something. Well, it, it's even worse than that because she says, yep, I'm just not attracted to you. Also, you know, the marriage thing, but mostly it's the I'm not attracted <laughs> to you thing. But what's so this scene is so fucking great because they just sit, they're sitting around talking literally about how handsome the actor that wrote this movie is mm -hmm. and what a threat he is to evolution yep yeah exactly because the one guy goes well what is he just crazy or something and she goes no he's not crazy it's been a while since i've had such a worthy adversary he's bold <sighs> intelligent the other guy goes handsome She's like, well, yeah, some might consider him handsome. Where? Show me the people that would consider this man handsome. It's the, that is the most extraordinary claim in this movie. <laughs> and someone, <laughs> someone will bring a character back from the dead, and that is the least realistic part of this film. <laughs> well, and then the guy goes like, hey, I've got an idea. Why don't you just fuck the Jesus out of that guy? And then she considers it. She's like, hmm, yeah, that might work. Yeah, and, and and spoiler, that will be the plan she goes with, right? She will literally try to fuck the Jesus out of him. Beginning with the date, right? Because she said, can we take this conversation elsewhere out of the classroom? So they, they go to have lunch together, and they're at this comically large table. <laughs> it's the best. They are at King Arthur's. Ra I expected like <laughs> Lancelot and the rest to get. Oh, do you yeah, we have a reservation. Okay, cool. We'll so just cool. <laughs> nobody fuck my wife while I'm gone. <laughs> so. All right. Yeah. So they have another conversation where he really sticks it to evolution. And she, it starts off with her going like, look, all educated people believe in evolution. And I'm like tautological. But yes. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, no, there's an incredibly small and ideologically motivated minority that believes otherwise, none of whom possess education in that area. Yeah, right, right. She, <laughs> and, and she starts talking. About, he starts talking about how biology uses, quote, suppression of freedom of thought end quote to get its way. And I'm like, I love that. These are the people arguing most vociferously against postmodernism, right? These yeah. people who uh, equate knowing facts with suppression of freedom of thought. Right. And even in this scene, she's like, dude, no one's suppressing your freedom of thought. I let you yell out your insane half ass theories in class. And he's like, no. No, because you don't tell the class that there's a 50-50 chance of me being right and you being wrong. Right, yeah. He, he goes like, well, but are you actively encouraging people to question the things that you say to them? No, she's a fucking expert. <laughs> Why would she do that? <laughs> the key to critical thought is to accept hard non-existence of anyone's ideas but your own that's what they say <laughs> oh jesus christ and then he goes i love this uh bit too because this is so telling as to what kind of human being writes this shit he goes you know unlike other academic subjects where you forget everything that you've learned a few days later in biology there's one thing you don't forget like wait a minute but dude there are multiple things <laughs> from all the academic fields I've studied that I haven't forgotten. And I smoke so much weed, the state of California sent me a thank you card, okay? <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's more of a him thing. Yeah, <laughs> and it, this is where he gets the, you think you're special just like Hitler? Yeah, she said, he goes like, well, I bet you think that you're better than other people because of your intelligence. And I'm like, well, she's better at thinking. That particular. Than other, that's what intelligence means, yeah. Well, and she's not just any smart person. She's a member of Mensa, which I think is how we all agree we define intelligence. <laughs> yes, exactly. For the, it's intelligence as those who are willing to pay the membership fee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he says, well, a lot of members of Mensa are creationists. And I'm like, yep, that's why we don't use that as a measurement. <laughs> that's why we don't use the standard. And, and again, this is real. There is a blog post about it. I could go into Mensa, but God is cooler. Yes. I don't, yes, don't want to. He has the whole, I could be in Mensa too. Just so you know, I've been taken several, several online IQ tests that said I could be. Some women think my IQ is too big. I've had complaints. 
You yeah. Know, the, the key is to understand that in the third part of the puzzle, there's only one sock. So you got to divide the <laughs> six to six. It's a genius test. I, I posted on my granddaughter's wall, but she blocked me. <laughs> so he I, goes, <laughs> at one, again, the, he's always got the opposite of the right point. He goes, you know, do me a favor. Try to get over your superiority complex one time by looking at all the stars in the heavens and imagining that your dad built them. Right? <laughs> what? Yeah, and she has this great moment where she's like, I I've looked at the stars. And he's like, not while thinking about Jesus, you haven't. You have to specifically. <laughs> and it's like, but you got to think happy thoughts. And, and just then, fly any thoughts. And then there's this great moment where he like, and I guess he thinks this is an argument that we don't, atheists will not never get a gotcha moment. Right? Because when we die and there is no God, we won't be able to turn to them and say, see, but when we die and there is a God, they will be able to do that. Yeah, it's, it's like our worldview isn't based on petty vengeance and yours <laughs> is. It's crazy how I didn't build a whole thing around you being wrong and punished and sad and in pain and tortured for eternity. It's weird. <laughs> makes me immoral actually if you think about it it makes me so immoral i can see why you wouldn't get that <laughs> <laughs> right but yeah but she's never really thought about but what if you're wrong though so she wants to go on a date with him and hear more about her inevitable death <laughs> well maybe she's like you want to go to dinner and he's like you're trying to poison me and she's like nope no, just <laughs> come to my house november I will fuck 20th the Jesus out of you <laughs> <laughs> I, when she said that November 20th, I was like, this is a goddamn November tacular and Eli hasn't told me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So they agree to go on a date and then we cut to the alcohol party with Stephanie. <laughs> oh, man. The lack of extras at this party is amazing. <laughs> it's like it's three people and then one guy running side to side off camera yelling, woo. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't know about you, Noah, but I felt very attacked by this scene as a non-drinker because it was like, hey, you're not drinking at the party? Nah, I don't, I don't like the taste of beer. Do you? Do you want an apple teeny? Yeah, I want an apple teeny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll yeah. have some sugar. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't want alcohol. I don't like alcohol. And then jerk guy Jace shows up. And he's like, I bet you're not even man enough to consume alcohol. And he's like, I'll drink bourbon with lemonade. <laughs> bourbon? bourbon with I texted Heath bourbon with lemonade and he texted me back. I quit the show. <laughs> that was the extent of Heath's contact with this film. <laughs> yeah, so they wander off so that Brad can turn his back on Jesus and consume alcohol at a party. And so Jace is left standing in a room by himself that's supposed to be a party. And he goes, I don't need you. There are plenty of hot girls at this party. And just then, the actress that plays Michaela walks by not facing the camera with her hair done slightly differently so that we'll think that there's another young woman in this movie. And he chases her. And by that, we mean the actress who plays Michaela has put her hair in a ponytail and is side shuffling across the back yes, of the yes, screen. She's, she's strafing like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Serpentine. Serpentine. <laughs> it's just an ordinary white girl neck. They're totally fooled. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So now we cut to Brad. He's sneaking into the dorm room drunk after his alcohol party. And I, I love this so goddamn much. The opening of this scene was literally shot in the dark. They don't know about the dark lighting and shit. They don't. It's the best. <laughs> this, this, how many days do you think they all sat there in this dark dorm room being like, I just, they do it in the other movies. Maybe they have a special. We need a night vision camera, guys. That's what we got. We got to get a night vision camera. So we just watch vague shapes move around for a solid 20 seconds. And then, thankfully, Gramps turns on the goddamn light so we can see what's going on. And he says, Brad, you've come back late and smelling of alcohol. Would, would you? This is literally what he says. Did your parents ever have the talk with you about the birds and the bees? <laughs> and the eternal fire that those birds yeah, and right, bees end right. up in? Also, there's a great line in this little speech where he says, 
with the sexual revolution in full bloom. And I wrote in my notes, I will never have an orgasm again, okay? Uh, yeah, okay. What, <laughs> what year does he think it is? He, and, and by the way, the following words from that, he goes, with the sexual revolution in full bloom, Stephanie probably thinks premarital sex is okay. And, you, and, and of course, in the movie, Brad has to go like, oh, wow, that's a bad thing. But, I mean... <laughs> Oh, I didn't. Good to know that she's going to fuck me. I mean, bad, bad to know that she's going to fuck me. Also, here's a horrifying insult into the mind of the writer of this movie. He says the sexual urge is the most powerful thing experienced by humans. That's terrifying. That's a terrifying <laughs> world. View. What would you say the most powerful emotion you've ever felt is? My boner. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> but of course, Brad knows all about not fucking. He doesn't need some old man to tell him how to not fuck. He knows. That's he right. Knows. So they go to bed. Then we, we cut back to the, that one restaurant that exists in this universe with the giant table, mm -hmm. uh, where Michaela is studying when Brad shows up. Yeah. And Brad's like, Hey, how come you're sitting all alone and we never see you have any friends except an old man, your roommate and me? And she's like, Oh, you know, all the other kids just want to talk about parties and drinking. Yeah, exactly. So she's too good for all of those other people. And she's not too sure the point of college, which makes sense since she doesn't want knowledge. Yeah. She's like, I don't know. This school seems kind of useless. It's just like, this is what's true. This is what's false. And it's like, I have a book for that, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, she's almost 20. She's an old maid at this point. <laughs> yeah. And so Brad confesses that he consumed some alcohol at the party. To which Michaela says, I know, Stephanie's my roommate, and she was bragging about dragging you from the arms of Christ and getting you to <laughs> sin. <laughs> yeah, Brad, can I be honest with you? I feel like, how do I say this? Um, a goat satyr, a fallen angel, is using my roommate <laughs> to steal you from Christ's eyes and out of his vision? Oh, where are you going? Is there something yes. I said? Is it because I said my roommate is the devil's pawn in your affection for her? Is planted by him. Oh, you're gone. You're yeah, gone. He goes. But no, he goes, nope, I just got to get to the intramurals. Yeah, right, right, exactly. First, first he has to clarify. So he's like, are you saying Stephanie's the devil? And she's like, no, no, that would be silly. I'm saying I'm saying the devil controls her mind and uses her as a pauper in order to win your soul. He's like, I got to go. I There's a sport thing. We have to oh. do the first sport. Would you look at the time? It's not talk to a person who thinks a goat demon is inside a college girl at clock. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. When every action is random, you can't exactly have act breaks. But this movie is about to crank the insanity up by an order of magnitude. So we're going to take a break to steal ourselves. But first, let me give it act the remainder of the hard sell. Will Jesus win the first big sports match? How can winning exist if it has no properties that we can see? What's the silliest thing that could possibly happen next? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the time cube conclusion of Gramps Goes to College. All right, everybody, ready for a drinking game? Whee! Yeah, we are. Hell yeah! All right, so this game is called Drink the, the, the Drink. Sorry, uh, Drink the Drink? Yep, that's it. First one to not drink to drink loses the game of drink to drink. Okay, but how do you know if the other person isn't going to drink? Yeah, it doesn't seem like a a game so much as it's it's just drinking. That's just drinking. Do you, you guys want to die instantly of alcohol poisoning or what? I do. It's true. I'm only doing this because I'm not a Christian. Me too. Obviously. Ooh, duh. And we're back. It's time for the big sports event. They haven't told us what sport it's going to be. Let's ask ourselves, what's the silliest sport it could possibly goddamn be? Check the fucking pool. Did anybody have chess? Because it's fucking chess. Nope. Too silly. Too. <laughs> no one had chess. I'm just imagining all the guys who thought they were going to be on a basketball team of some sort going like, oh, I don't. Horse is two up and one over, right? <laughs> 
But yeah, so we're going to do the clever, you know, he's going to have another anti-evolution argument, this time against the 43-year-old guy he's playing chess against in this intramural competition. And, and they're going to try to use the clever like, oh, they're having uh, playing a chess game while also verbally sparring as in chess, but they don't know how to do that. So Either of the, they don't know how to verbally spar, they don't know how to play <laughs> chess, there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, and so they, the guy starts goading him on, he's like, Oh, so aren't you that anti-science guy? He's like, I'm not against science. I'm just against correct science. I'm just against science unless it believes exactly what I believe. Yeah, right, right. I, I have to point out, of course, his team is called the Sons of God. The other team is called the Demons, and this the character's demons. number is 66. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it quickly turns from an anti-evolution conversation... <laughs> To an anti-fluoride conversation. All right. So there are three moments in this movie where I wish I had video or at least audio of me watching the movie. Right. <laughs> the first was when the biology professor opened her class. We've already been through that. This was the second. The third was the big one. But this was the <laughs> second one when suddenly he goes, well, is it just evolution or is there any other anti-science shit you'd like to spout out about? And he goes, well, what about the fluoridation of the drinking water? <laughs> I, I fucking lost it. And, and, and while I'm still trying to recover from that, he tries to pronounce fibromyalgia. Uh, yes, fibromyalgia, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce fibromyalgia is my spirit animal. I <laughs> went back over and over again. And keep in mind, YouTube doesn't have a convenient go back 10 seconds button. I had to manually go back over and over again to listen to him <laughs> say fibromyalgia. It was <laughs> over amazing. and over again. By the way, the way he uses fibromyalgia is, you know, what about all the cancer and illnesses like fibromyalgia? Could fluoride cause that stuff? No. <laughs> Checkmate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I love, okay, so at first, my because I, I, I'm writing in my notes, like, the guy he's playing chess against is making the most insane and terrible possible opening moves. So if you know anything about chess at all, the guy is is playing black. His first move is knight to a6, right? Like and, and at first I'm thinking like, all right, well, they've just like clearly told him to make these moves that will bring about a quick checkmate. But then I started thinking, look, if I sit down and play chess and the first thing the guy I'm playing says is, well, what about all the fluoride in the drinking water? I'm going night to a six, man. Yeah, I might just <laughs> ask him to king me on the chance that he thinks that's a thing. Yeah, exactly. Hey, can I can I castle over to your side of the board, perhaps next to your rook? Um, I don't know. Do you know the password? Uh, Jesus. <laughs> yep. Oh, you win. Did the Jesus castle. So the guy starts walking away. And as this character that he's just beaten in chess is walking away, he's shouting out and about China trying to poison us with fluoride. This is the protagonist of the, the film. protagonist of the film. Also, he allows us to know that he doesn't use fluoride toothpaste. So he just gently touches his teeth twice a day <laughs> <laughs> and then we get we get him chessing against another hapless kid yeah i i wrote the first note i have here is you know that no jews showed up for work on 9 11 <laughs> <laughs> and they do this dumbass thing that people who don't know how chess works uh goes where the one guy's going check 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 and then the other guy goes check mate it's like there's no possible combination of shit that could give me a fucking break anyway <laughs> but now he's the intramural chess champion see he's an athlete that's a sport it's a great sport i'll have you know very old sport and as he defeats him he goes also just apropos of nothing i'm in your bio class thank you for standing up for our lord and savior jesus christ to which he replies you're welcome. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, okay, so then we cut over to Jace. He's looking over the intramural rankings, and damn it, now that that chess tournament is over, Jesus is in first place. <laughs> I love, I love this sheet. So, first of all, it's on the wall. It is an 8 by 11 sheet of paper with two lines of type on it. Yep, exactly. 
Yeah, rankings. Number one, the sons of God. Number two, demons. Yeah. Jace. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it's just taped to some random wall somewhere. They didn't have a bulletin board they could use, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, so he's looking over that. And just then Brad and Stephanie walk by. So they all talk some shit, right? He goes like, you're only winning because of wimp sports like ping pong and chess. Yeah, I never run two miles. I eat nothing but meat. Pronouns are slavery. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there's also a great moment where Stephanie like goes to like give uh, Jace some shit, and Brad makes her stop talking because he's the man. Yeah, you know how one of the protagonists in the movie covers a woman's mouth to prevent her from talking back to a man. Yep, that happens in the movie. That's mm -hmm. a, that's a good guy. Uh, and then we watch cross country racing because at least four Christian filmmakers don't realize that isn't interesting to look at, and we've watched all of them now. Two hundred and twenty episodes for cross country races. <laughs> also, they they understand cross country racing so badly that like they start running, and the fact that Gramps is like the the race has gone on for literally seconds, and Jace turns to them and is like, "Ha, Gramps is losing." Yeah, right. But no, of course, Gramps and Brad take first and second place because they don't consume alcohol. Yeah, Gramps' exact quote, they fill their bodies with substances that slow them down. Yeah, mm-hmm, lead. Wanted it, I was, exactly, I wanted it to cut over to them at the craft table just eating balls of lead and ball <laughs> bearings, <laughs> slowly swallowing gold bricks. Aww. I And I know this is such a minor thing, but when they're sitting there having their little victory conversation, they're sitting on this park bench and there's a no fishing sign in the background that is so conspicuous and out of place. I thought it was clickable when I paused. <laughs> but, but yeah, so the ladies congratulate them on their win and they decide to celebrate with strawberry shakes from Hardee's. Which is where my wife had to leave the room. She was like, <laughs> I cannot think of a more disgusting thing after a long distance running. Yes, yes, no mm. shit. Let's get a strawberry, a post run strawberry shake and some hot dog water <laughs> <laughs> from Hardy's. God, Jesus. Yeah, so, but Stephanie's like, I don't want no stinking shake. So, Michaela and Gramps leave to go get a shake, and Brad and Stephanie are left talking. Where, you know, Stephanie is trying to talk him into celebrating with her at another one of those fine alcohol parties that colleges have. But Brad has a meltdown like Heath and a waiter who's taken away the last two fries. He's like, what a strawberry shake! What a strawberry shake! You say I can have a fucking strawberry shake! There's no question that this actor was generating something very real in himself and was promised paying for this film in strawberry shakes. All right, so now it's time for Gramps to have his big date with the biology professor, right? So he walks in and she goes like, I consider males to be the weaker of the two sexes. That's my character. Hello, men are inferior to women. I'm a feminist today. <laughs> she goes, wait, are you some kind of doomsday prophet? And then he doesn't say no. Exactly. No. He will not go as far as no. He's like, well, if you consider the end of the world, a legitimate yes. <laughs> well, it has no properties that you can see, though, so it can't exist. Yeah, So, and, and I will say, I'm actually fairly impressed with the actor playing the biology professor because she actually manages to like seem interested in him romantically despite the shit he's saying. That had to be a challenge. Yeah, that's some Meryl Streep-level shit. Yeah, and she says, I just really want to know what makes you tick. And he says, well, what makes me tick is invisible, even with an electron microscope. And I wrote like, oh, like natural selection, so it doesn't exist, you don't tick? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> she says, can we say, change the subject? He's like, nope, I'm going to talk about God constantly, no matter what. She's like, fine, eat your SpaghettiOs. <laughs> Here, have these giant cauldron of SpaghettiOs <laughs> I've made for us. <laughs> She pours out some wine and it's red wine because that's what goes with ragu. But um, <laughs> but he doesn't consume alcohol. So she's like, I'll just drink both glasses of wine. And I'm like, 
lady, don't try to win Heath's heart on this episode. He's not even here. <laughs> He's not here. There's no point. Also, the way she pours this wine. I mean, look, I know that they filled a, a bottle with grape juice or whatever and then apologized to the grass that they poured the wine out on. Or whatever, <laughs> but like she is pouring these glasses to the brim. Yeah. yeah, like you have to lean over and slurp at the beginning of your drink. Yes. <laughs> and this is where he makes her put on a jacket because her incredibly normal sweater is too whorish for him. Oh my, but not not just makes her, but stand, she's, he says, close your eyes for a minute. I have a surprise for you. And then he stands up and puts a jacket over her slightly exposed shoulders. I am wearing a t-shirt that shows more of my cleavage at this moment than her sweater shows of yeah. hers. Yeah, and, and by the way, that's how the scene ends. Yep. The, right? he, that scene ends with her being like, oh, thank you. I didn't realize I was a whore. <laughs> <laughs> and again, like the dark universe that existed where they got this woman and they were like, hey, um, make sure you wear your sluttiest outfit for the dinner scene. And she was like, I know just the thing that sweater I got at Sears. And her husband was like, whoa, I don't know if I... That, that technically makes you a porno actress, am I right? <laughs> huh? Look at these naked pictures of Jerry Falwell Jr.'s wife. You want to see? <laughs> he keeps texting them to me. So, all right. So then we cut forward in time. They're done eating. He's pretty impressed with her chef boy RD warming abilities. And then so she's like, she's had a few glasses of wine. Now she's like, so what do I have to say to get that dick in me? <laughs> but rather than sex, he would like to argue about Charles Darwin and how he was the puppet of the devil. Oh, and again, this scene will just be her being like, so penis and vagina and him being like, and another thing about flagellum, p -p -p professor. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, because they're trying to go for like the scene from the graduate or something or whatever. But it's just this really awkward, like, have you ever considered that you might be condemning children to hell? And, and her going, like, do you want to yell that at me while we fuck? Just really just need you to focus. We need to pick a topic here. One of us needs to pick a topic. Also, one of the things he says as she is, like, straddling his face and putting a cowboy hat on him is, <laughs> you know, Jesus appears to Jews and Muslims all the oh time. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? I, I swear, the fucking screenwriter was being paid by the number of Intera banks he could work into my notes. <laughs> what? Yeah, she, she goes like, well, why can't you show me God? And he says, well, there are reports, especially amongst Jews and Muslims, that Jesus is appearing to them. <laughs> <laughs> really want to see that, right? Just a bunch of guys sitting around a temple. Do you guys see that? That's Jesus, right? Am I crazy? <laughs> That's very clearly Jesus. We're not talking about We'll put it in the report, Morris. We'll put it in the report, and then we'll send it over to the Donald. main Jew. Yeah, Donald. right. What? Yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, though, he refuses to fuck her, and she's furious, right? He leaves, and she has this whole, nobody doesn't fuck me moment. <laughs> that SOB, because, you know, we alcoholic atheists refuse to say bitch on a pretty regular Yeah, basis. right. No, exactly. We wouldn't want to be lewd. So, all right. So now Gramps is on his way back home. I, I love this so much. Michaela intercepts him. Something has gone terribly wrong. Now, Michaela doesn't know what it is. Right. No. Nobody knows what it is because it hasn't even happened yet in the timeline. She's like, something's gone wrong with Stephanie. He's like, what is it? He's like, well, she's like, well, it's in the next scene, but we have to go to that scene quick. <laughs> yep. Yeah. She is her Christ sense is tingling. Yeah, exactly. You're right. So. All right. So they leave. They're going to go rescue Brad from the alcohol at that alcohol party. And then the biology professor shows up chasing after him drunkenly. She's like, you know, she stops. She's like, hey, did you see that old guy that's the main character? I have to go give him a piece of my veg. Yeah, and the, the, the person's like, um, I don't know where it is. I'm not a cop. Tell me where the party is. <laughs> I have to tell you if I am. <laughs> the the other the other characters are the ones who mentioned party. No one said party. You tell the fucking party. Yeah, hey, look, it's that guy from earlier in the movie. You drive me there. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, the music is damn certain that she's going to kill Gramps when they get there, <laughs> right? 
Oh, that would have been pretty great. All right. So now we cut to the alcohol party again, four people standing around trying to look like a crowd and they're having a, they're playing a drinking game, Stephanie versus Jace in which they drink 20 shots of Everclear in three minutes and find out who's still alive. Yes. Uh, answer, <laughs> not Stephanie. Yeah. So they're having a drinking contest to see who can consume the most alcohol. And suddenly Stephanie goes, I don't feel so good and falls down dead. Dead. She dies from the alcohol in the movie. By the way, this is the events that happen. She falls down dead. Someone goes, is there a doctor in the house? Someone who is not the professor's friend. This is very important. The, not the professor's friend goes, I'm pre-med. Yup, she's dead. She has no vital signs. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so all the kids bail, right? They, they call 911 and they all run away so they won't get in trouble. But Brad stays behind with her. And that's when Gramps and Michaela show up with biology professor Harpy Lady in tow. Yep. So the biology professor comes run, storming in to give uh, uh, Gramps a piece of her mind. But then Brad has to yell at her and he has this amazingly verbose tirade about how she doesn't teach useful biology stuff like how to not drink 20 shots of Everclear in three minutes, but instead drives them away from the arms of a loving God. And there are way too many words for him to yell. So he has to like take a big breath in the middle of his <laughs> yelling shit. <laughs> Poor kid gives it his all, but it's not a, not a yellable line. <laughs> and this is where oh. Michaela is going uh. to pray Stephanie back to life. Yeah. And it's not the best part of the scene. She's going to pray <laughs> Michaela back to life. And it is secondary to the craziest moment in the scene. Because when Stephanie wakes up, we learned that when she died, she went to hell. Yes. <laughs> yes. She says it was so hot in there. The, the fire was so painful. <laughs> we are so far beyond parody now. I've got nothing. I'm sorry. I have to cash in my chips at this point, guys. There are so many times in this job, and this is possibly tantamount amongst them, where we just want to stop the God Awful Movies podcast and be like, really, it's on YouTube, guys. You just got to watch it. I feel like if you just watch it. We can't do better than they did. Yes. <laughs> Our goal is to make you laugh, and you can watch it. It's free on the internet. You should do it. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So she gets prayed back to life, and then biology professor and her buddy start to leave, right? And then biology professor has this amazing, like, moment of clarity where suddenly she understands God. And she starts basically reading the side of the Dr. Bonner's soap package to us, right? <laughs> Nothing she says makes any fucking sense. It's, also, her professor buddy, she's like, are you sure she was dead? And he was like, yep, I checked her. No, no, you didn't. Nope. We've been watching the movie. <laughs> you weren't even there when the pre-med student did it. Yeah, exactly. You had no reason to think she was dead. <laughs> But yeah, but she has this realization that information exists, which we, which is weird because it has no properties that we can see. But she says, like, information is the third element of the universe. That must mean that there's a God. And after this movie makes what it thinks is its big revelatory point, another character in the movie turns to the person making that point and says, come on, you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. After she explains that the third element of the universe after matter and energy is information that the fourth element of the universe is free will, the other character in the film goes, yeah, you're really fucked up. We should get you home. You should vomit. <laughs> Feel better about that. And look, look. Noah and I have been around some really fucking high people. And we've been around some really fucking high people who also had a mental illness. That is what they talk about when they are starting to give in to one of those things. Right? Yes. Yes. This, yeah, this is exactly like that thing that occurs to you at 3 a.m. when you're on acid that you write down and then laugh about when you sober up again. Yeah. There's a note that's still on my phone that says, dip the balloon in icy cold water. I didn't make a movie about it. <laughs> I don't know if I actually got to a balloon, everybody. I don't know what was going on. It was just on my phone when I woke up. All right. So now we cut to Stephanie in the hospital recovering from her death. Um, she's 
She's being wheeled around and she says, I'm sorry, can we stop in the chapel for a moment? I need to rededicate my life to Christ. Yeah. Also, mom is here. Remember mom from the very second scene of the movie? Yeah. Uh -huh. She's here. Yeah, and we're supposed to recognize her. Fuck you. They sit down in the chapel and she goes, Mom, I th I'm so glad you came. She says, nothing's more important in the world than my daughter. Except God, of course. You come in second to the imaginary dude, but... Literally, after. she corrects her. She's like, well, except for God, Mom. And she's like, right, of, of course. Except for God. Except for God. Yeah. So Stephanie has this tearful moment where she realizes that it's all college's fault that she lost her Christianity, really. Yes, this is where her mom announces that her college professors... And the entertainment professionals <laughs> are listening to the devil. Yes, yes. Satan is whispering messages into their ear. Hello, I'm an entertainment professional. <laughs> Today I will be delivering you entertainment for <laughs> monetary goods and services. <laughs> Here, you wait till I tell you guys what Satan whispered yesterday. Um, <laughs> And then, by the way, Brad shows up, and there's almost no reason to bring up that Brad shows up, except that he shows up with the worst fucking bouquet ever. Oh, they're amazing. They're like they're like the flowers that Michaels throws out, and you're waiting by the dumpster. You're like, you sure I can't have those? And they're like, okay. Okay. <laughs> Fine. I mean, it's so weird to me when they manage to get something like bouquet of flowers wrong in these movies, right? Because... You figure they just go to the same store as us, right? But no, mm -hmm. no, they found some kind of dollar store florist or something <laughs> and bought the worst goddamn bouquet you can imagine. All right. So then we fade out on a cross. We ask ourselves, how can there still be half an hour left in this movie? And then we cut to biology class where apparently <laughs> Dr. Tucker, the, the harpy lady that had the religious experience in the last scene, has been fired from the, her job for being religious. Hello, everyone. Professor Tucker is fired. I'm your substitute college professor. Yes. Uh -huh. Which is a thing. He, he's the interim <laughs> professor. Yeah. I'm going to be showing you a video today. It's all <laughs> real out of the VHS. <laughs> and then maybe we'll play kickball. Um, <laughs> so. All right, everyone. Heads down, thumbs up. This is college. <laughs> All right. And then, oh, my God, I, I'm so sad that I, you know, no offense to you, Eli, but I want to tag in Heath right here so goddamn bad because this is the basketball scene, right? This whole time as they're going from sport to sport to sport, you're like, but but are they going to have the old man play them in a sport like basketball? And sure enough, we show up to play basketball. But in their intramural championships, the type of basketball that they've chosen to play is horse. Well, huh, because it's oh, yeah, sudden no, you're death right. horse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's huh. It's just, hey. yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> wanted Bernie to come in and start making half court shots in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so and, and there's we start off. There are three people, but we have to narrow it down to Gramps and Jace pretty quickly. So the first guy throws the goddamn ball as though he would like he's he's got a tray of glasses that was already going to fall and he's trying to push it away from him. <laughs> you know, and and Gramps, by the way, throws the goddamn ball like it's pinching him on its way away. But it doesn't matter because we're not going to do any of this in a single shot or anything. <laughs> we're no. going to see somebody throw it. And we're going to see a ball going into the basket. <laughs> and we'll barely catch the ladder that they had to pull up in the shot. Yeah, right. They won't be coming from the angle the guy's standing at. But, or, you know, let's not get technical here. But, yes, Grandpa beats Jace at horse. And that's the last straw, damn it. Now they're falling so far behind the intramural standings that they might not be able to catch up at all. Which means it's time to take Gramps out. To it, Yeah, the, 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 the buddy goes like, I think we need to do something about that. And Jason's like, we need to kill the old man. Gotcha, gotcha. I just happy. He's like, no, no, put the garrote <laughs> away, man. I was thinking we would get, get him kicked out of school, you know, <laughs> accuse him of buying alcohol for minors or something. He's like, oh, okay. I've oh, okay. Carrying around this girl for nothing. <laughs> I wanted him to be like, hey, man, you suggest murder too often. Can I give you that note? <laughs> for an intramural trophy, I need you to up those stakes <laughs> for murder. <laughs> now I'll go get my friend in theater who refused to do this movie to act out the getting alcoholed by the prof 
old guy. Yeah, right. So, okay, so then we cut directly from that to the meeting with the college administrator where they tell him that they're going to uh, kick him out of school. They're, he's going to be expelled. This is when we see the close-up on that only science can unlock the mysteries of the universe poster that we've seen like three times now. Yes, yes. Also, when he says you're expelled... Oh, God. Gramps goes, expelled. Great title for a movie. I mean... Get it? I Like, I <laughs> even know what movie he's talking about, and still... What? <laughs> anyway, yeah, and, and by the way, they don't tell him like why he's been expelled, right? Just no. <laughs> he pulls out a piece of paper with handwriting on it and says, "I've been keeping an eye on you here on this piece of paper <laughs> with various highlights and scribbles on it." Yeah, you are fired from college. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he goes out to commiserate with his pals, and he's thinking that maybe what he'll do is stay in town and get an apartment and help college kids love Jesus by leading Bible studies. Now, this scene is hardly worth bringing up, except for the fact that he makes this whole big speech about how if we really followed Jesus, our lives would be as adventurous as Lord of the Rings. <laughs> No idea what he's going for there, but that's I what he says. I so He's just like, yeah, you know, people say that it's super boring to be Christian because you're just dwelling on the same Bronze Age book over and over again, but it's not. It's not like that. It would be fun, <laughs> like a book See, I read more like that's better. You're, you're like a hobbit that had to bring a ring to a volcano is how cool it would be. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's like one of those not at all boring adventure, like. Frodo's journey in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, these kids want some fucking excitement. I'll tell them about that four page conversation about tobacco. That'll fucking get them psyched. There you go, kids. Tony the Tiger, my ass. But now, of course, the problem here, though, is that now that he's been expelled, he can't help him win intramural championships. So he's going to have to teach Brad how to tennis good in a montage. <laughs> and by the way, weirdest fucking montage in cinematic history because half of it is tennis training, but the other half is just literally him playing duck, duck, goose with children. Yep. It is him leading Bible studies and just I, I thought for a second I was like, oh, is he is he going back to kindergarten? Is that what happened? He's now going down. The, raises his hand during color learning time. Excuse me. I don't believe in red. <laughs> does red have any properties that I can see and touch? <laughs> How much does red weigh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's doing puppets. He's playing Duck, Duck, Goose. They're teaching tennis. That's a scene. Also, it's just a tiny moment, but I have to talk about it. He does the like, that's not a racket. This is a racket and hands him a ever so slightly nicer racket that is not that nice. It is tragic. It'd be like being like, oh, is that a 1992 Volvo? Maybe you should try my 1993 Passat. Try yeah, well, a real car. <laughs> well, I, I, if you could discern any difference between those two rackets, congratulations. They were identical <laughs> to me, and I paused the movie. <laughs> So, yeah, right. So the, he teaches him how to tennis. So now it's time for the big tennis tournament because that's how this fucking movie works, guys. Mm. Yep. So we skip ahead. Now, there will be literally no tennis played during this tennis scene. Zero tennis. I just wrote in my notes. Oh, my God. We're just going to cut back and forth between the score and the girls reacting to the score, aren't we? And yes, we do. Yes, we are. <laughs> Um, the only thing that we ever see is there's literally one shot at the very end of Jace standing still while a ball flies past him and everyone yells, hooray, Brad won. <laughs> well, and by everyone, we mean the three people. In yeah, this well, film. right. Yeah, exactly. The only people watching this championship apparently are Stephanie, Michaela and Gramps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, Brad's immediate reaction to winning the intramural tennis tournament I want my fucking strawberry shake! Where do I get <laughs> a strawberry does. shake? <laughs> he totally does, too. <laughs> There's also this great man moment between Jace and Gramps where Jace says to Gramps, he's like, you go to hell. And then Gramps goes, you go to heaven. I'm going to be praying for you so goddamn hard, Jace. <laughs> 
But now Gramps has to leave. His his work here is done, so he has to wander on like Bruce Banner at the end of an episode. And by the way, yes, I did spend several minutes arguing with myself whether I should use David or Bruce in that uh, example. But yes, yep. he, but he has to, he has to go. So it's time for everybody to tell him goodbye. We we have well everybody being Michaela and uh, Stephanie. They for whatever reason couldn't get Brad for this scene. Yes, so they have to explain it. They're like, Brad's not here, not because he said we could only have him for the weekend, but because he loves you so much and he loves you. That is why he is not in this <laughs> now time scene. So time. Michaela's like, hey, I bought you this crucifix. Don't try not to bend it. Try not to bend it. It'll bend. I got it from <laughs> Hot Topics, though. I got you the gaudiest piece of. Christianity four dollars can buy <laughs> to which he responds and this is the fucking best if you read his blog I just pray my granddaughter whom I've never met turns out just like you yes that's so fucking sad now. <laughs> it's, it's such a fucking dark what a crazy piece of darkness I know. what <laughs> What a gift. What a gift into this human's worldview. We could have been this guy's therapist for six years and not gotten a more tragic or personal revelation he put in the script of this film. All right, wait. So now Stephanie gives him a, a card. Dr. Tucker, the, the biology professor that found Jesus, has sent him a card. Somehow the card has eight and a half pages of writing on it because he reads this for 15 fucking minutes. And it's just Dr. Tucker is a Christian now. Yeah. So now he's he's got to leave because, damn it, he doesn't want to cry like a woman, but he sure will miss those scrappy kids. So he goes to leave. And for no reason that is explicable, given what we know about this movie, when he goes to leave, the hallway is lined on both sides by elderly people and tiny children cheering for him. It is so sad. If the camera had faded out as he was walking through them and then faded up on him alone in a nursing home, staring out the window. <laughs> says, eh, yay, we love you. Nah, all the marshmallow peeps I can eat, you shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that would have been the perfect ending yep that's the dallas <laughs> season seven ending that this movie needs yes sir all right so then okay we're almost done we cut to michaela now she's challenging this new biology professor with more why are you afraid of god level arguments yep and then we cut to a group of middle schoolers standing up and reading their favorite what quotes just yeah. in a line. Yeah. OK. Well, first of all, they apparently decided to go with like, you know, strongest reader, shortest quote rule here. <laughs> it's the fucking best. It's it's just out of the blue. These are not characters from the movie. Just out of the blue. We cut to a classroom with six kids standing up. Each one of them will read a quote from a smart person that they think supports their side of the argument. Right. Well, no, I'm sorry. The first two have smart people. After that, they really have to start scraping the bottom of the barrel there. By the way, second kid mispronounces irreconcilable. He's like, <laughs> such and such a science says that it, evolution is irreconcilable. <laughs> it, and then he like looks into the camera like, should we do another take? And everyone behind the camera nods no. <laughs> we also get a anti-evolution quote. Well, not even an anti-evolution quote. We get a somewhat godlike quote from the great scientist Leo Tolstoy. Like I said, they ran out early on this. <laughs> I thought I was having a nightmare. I thought I'd fallen asleep in this movie and was just having a nightmare. But no, I went back and checked. This is really in the movie. <laughs> All right, so one last scene. We've come full circle. We're back in the gym. That one guy is still doing the same exercise on the same machine as though he's just been trapped there through the whole movie. <laughs> uh, I, my tricep is literally dead. It's legally <laughs> dead. The blood flow has stopped. It's just a black hunk of flesh that hangs off my body. How was college? <laughs> did, you, did you win is his first question. Did you win college? Yep. And he says, yes, I'm just like Rambo, but for Jesus. 
And then, oh, oh, and then, of course, he has to close it off with like, a, and don't forget, this movie is so stupid. We prayed people back to life in it earlier. <laughs> the end. The end. He practically says out loud. <laughs> All right, so I got to say, honestly, I feel bad because I was really looking forward. I don't think I have the linguistic capacity to really encapsulate how bad this movie is. So if you've never do. watched one of the movies, you think that we're act like exaggerating how bad they are. This is the one to see. It's on YouTube. You don't have to pay for it or anything. It is so fun. Like, I honestly, you already said that you thought Unexpected Bar Mitzvah was worse. So I I'll leave off my question about whether this was the best worst movie we've ever seen. Oh. But that's literally where I was at the end of this. That was the last question <laughs> I had was like, is there anything that we've ever seen that is more bad than this? Yeah. And I look, this show has proven over 220 episodes that we can always go down. I just don't know how. Yeah, right, right. Like, that's the thing is that the, the fucking past has told us, no, there's something worse than this that somehow we're going to dig up in the future. But man, I can't even conceive of it from this dimension. All right, so while that's going to do it for our review of Gramps Goes to College, it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to fire you up for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, for years now, in the softest whispers, I've heard of a Christian SNL that haunted church youth groups across the nation. Whoa. Sure, there was a clip here, a, a mention on a blog there, but after an Indiana Jones-like effort, I have uncovered it. The first full episode of Fire by Night. So next week, we will be watching Fire by Night, episode one, Peer Pressure. Oh, <laughs> So you might not have to wait long for us to find yeah, some as worse. Always, we might just find always, it next week. Um, <laughs> all right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 220 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, and The Skeptic Ride, which are available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard and earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. Eli spent the rest of his life reading Donald James Parker's blogs. He died happy. A thorough understanding of evolution went on to cure diseases and shit. Including fibromyalgia. <laughs> fibromyalgia. <laughs>Morgan, just for the record, right when we went to record these interstitials, Anna goes like, should I get my mic? And he's like, no, no, you can use mine. And she's like, Morgan hates it when we do that. And right. uh, Eli's like, yes, but I don't care. It's uh, not what I said, Morgan. I Morgan said can suffer. She only has a few. Because he's so short. I don't like <laughs> short people. <laughs> you know, I do, man. I married one that makes you look like a fucking giant. So, you know, I'm in the clear. It's like those racists that's like. They're like, how can I be racist if my wife's a Filipino? That's right. I'm like that, but with height. <laughs> you would be amazed at how many slurs I'm allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And we'll do another four count. Excellent. Five count, Eli. Five count. That's right. But you were close. What is this? The goddamn Holy Grail? <laughs> <laughs> One. Five, sir. Cool. Movie's so fucking <laughs> insane. <laughs> oh, Morgan, just you wait, sir. That's that's no exaggeration <laughs> at all. I wasn't sure which movie you were doing, and now I remember exactly which movie you guys were doing. Oh, <laughs> oh um, this is so awesome when they play <laughs> basketball. It's horse. Oh, it's they the play best. horse. They do play horse. Competitive horse. Competitive intramural horse. Oh, poor Heath. 
I can't believe <laughs> Keith missed this one. All right, Sad. sorry. <laughs> Interstitial two. That, oh, that we've moment. peaked. That was like maybe my favorite moment in all of like because this because <laughs> the thing is like look. So when people ask me what's the worst thing that you ever watched, I will not give them this one right because I'm I'm still gonna give them like uh, if footmen tire you. Uh, or something like that, because that one is fun to watch. This one was not mm-hmm. fun to watch, right? This was a goddamn slog. It took me eight hours to get through this piece of shit, um, but it might literally be the worst thing that we've ever seen, just in terms of the writing and the argumentation and the Definitely cinematography. Definitely the worst argumentation, yeah. Well, and, and the cinematography, of course, is just like Chip Rossetti is just the absolute worst that you can you can get right like it's yeah. it's if you went out and started filming something with your iphone you would instinctually do something better than this i would instinctually not just film in the dark if i wanted to see <laughs> it at night it's true <laughs> it is true you know he's got all several right. more movies we haven't done yet there's still I like know, seven I found or eight them all Chip i'm Rose so and, excited oh, good oh good right. i like i said i felt so bad leaving heath out on this one we'll make sure we get him <laughs> on for the next chip rossetti oh yeah the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.